Hello my lovelies and welcome to the Spirit Tarot and Healing Arts YouTube channel. If you are new, welcome back. If you are a returning viewer, I'm Rin and today we are going to be talking about glamour magic. I intend to do a few videos about glamour magic and dedicate a playlist just to this topic, but this will be the first video. In today's video, we're going to talk about what it is and what isn't glamour magic and then we're going to talk about how you can use your everyday hygiene practices as part of your glamour magic. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel and hit the bell so that you get notified when I post new content and don't forget to like and share this video. Before we begin, just some quick updates. As always, I will never DM you or approach you in the comments here on YouTube asking you to book a reading or service with me. I never do that. So if you get approached by someone posing as me, know that it is a scammer. If you would like to book a service or a reading with me, you can do so by contacting me through my website or my Etsy shop, both of which are linked in the description box below. On that note, you may notice some changes to the listings I have in my Etsy shop. One thing you'll notice is that I am experimenting with offering Reiki again on Etsy. And I'm also experimenting with offering a version of my spiritual soul retrieval work on Etsy as well. I have worked on these listings to do the best I can to comply with what Etsy requires. They did say none of these types of services on there. Uh, but I was about the only person that actually followed that. There are still tons of people offering Reiki and things on there. So I'm just putting those listings back up and we'll see what happens. As for Etsy, you may notice that I have reduced the overall number of listings I have on there because frankly, the Etsy platform itself just stresses me out. If you're not sure why or how Etsy stresses me out, you can go check out my video playlist about being a reader on Etsy. It's basically just more of the same old issues with Etsy and I have other projects that I'd like to devote more energy to. So while I'm not yet able to leave Etsy altogether, I'm still on there. I still have a lot of listings offered on there. It's not going to be quite as full of listings as I've had before. At the time I'm recording this, I think I have 33 listings up, which sounds like a lot, but that's down from like 55 listings. If you know of a reading or a service that I do offer or that I used to offer on Etsy and you're not seeing it on the Etsy page, but you're interested in it, you can always message me through the Etsy shop or through my website because I still do all of those readings and those services. I'm just not keeping active listings for them on Etsy. And just as an added reminder, there are all kinds of services I offer through my website that I don't and or can't offer through Etsy, such as one-on-one -on -one spiritual soul retrieval sessions, fragmented soul healing, Akashic records work, EFT, and a whole bunch of other things. Now for today's topic, glamour magic. What is it? Glamour magic is a type of working that you do in order to alter or enhance others' perceptions of you. It is intended to get people to see you in a certain way. While it is directed at how others perceive you, in my personal experience and practice, it can also affect how you perceive yourself. I've heard it said, and in most cases I do tend to agree, the most successful glamours are merely highlighting or amplifying traits you already possess. There's a couple of reasons for this. Let's say you have to give a presentation at work. You really know your stuff, but maybe you don't really like talking in front of people and you're afraid that that nervousness might make some not give enough weight to your expertise. Or, you know, there's some people who tend not to listen to anyone but themselves. You could use glamour magic to reinforce and project your expertise so that others will be more likely to place more weight and value on what you have to say during your presentation. On the other hand, let's say you didn't put any work into the presentation and you're just pulling stuff out of your behind and you know it. You may be able to use that same glamour magic to baffle them with bullshit during the presentation. 
but you can't back it up. So it's going to take you putting a lot more energy into that glamour magic for it to be successful. Glamour magic isn't permanent. It has a shelf life. So you're going to have to feed it or redo it constantly to keep up the glamour. And more than likely, at some point, your actions aren't going to line up with the glamour in the example we're using of you not really knowing what you're talking about for the presentation. And they're not going to line up through with your glamour to a magnitude that no matter how much energy you put into the glamour or how good you are at glamour, you're going to break the glamour and others will see the truth. So that's why I and others say the best glamours are merely highlighting or amplifying things you already are. And this is why I say sometimes that glamour magic, while it's more so to get other people to perceive you in a certain way, it can also have an impact on yourself. Let's say that you don't really see yourself as exceptionally good looking, but you want others to perceive you as good looking and doing a glamour working where you're getting others to perceive you as attractive because you're putting that thought out there and you're getting into that vibe and you're doing this work, you can also help yourself to see yourself as more attractive. So while it's primarily focused on others, a lot of times we are amplifying or highlighting positive things about ourselves, And by doing that, we are reinforcing those positive things within ourselves psychologically, and it can help us with our own self-esteem and how we perceive ourselves. Basically, it can be a side effect of glamour magic. I have used glamour magic since I began my witchcraft practice all the way back in the 90s. But recently I decided that I wanted to sort of refresh my glamour magic practice. I haven't been using it as much or as efficiently as I can. So recently I decided that I wanted to refresh it all and that I wanted to really bring it more into a daily thing that I do. I literally said to myself like, darn, why aren't I using glamour magic as much lately? Why am I not using it on the daily like I used to? And so I went about working to immediately change that and make glamour magic a part of my daily routine again. Do you need any supplies in order to do glamour magic? That depends on your personal preferences and what you are using glamour magic for. A common use of glamour magic that I know that I have used a lot as a woman who's had to navigate dangerous environments is quote unquote the invisibility glamour. Now let's make this perfectly clear. Glamour magic is not protection magic. They are not one and the same. It is not actively protecting you. It is not protecting you. It is altering people's perception of you. Many people confuse this type of glamour for protection magic, and it isn't. Glamour magic works very similarly to hypnosis. Your skill level at glamour magic and the level of suggestibility of the person perceiving you will be the leading factors in if your glamour magic is successful. Just like a hypnotherapist can't hypnotize someone into doing something that they don't want to do, you can't glamour someone into seeing you a certain way if they are bound and determined not to. Everyone can be hypnotized, but how well or easily a person can be hypnotized depends on how suggestible they are. A person who is more suggestible will be able to be hypnotized more easily and they are more likely to respond in the way you want to your glamour magic. This is why glamour magic is not protection magic, though it can be used as an element within your protection workings. You should still be doing mundane things to keep yourself safe and using protection magic. Back to the idea of if you need items to do glamour magic and the common glamour of invisibility. You're not actually making yourself disappear like a character with an invisibility cloak in D&D or a fantasy novel. What we mean in this case is that the glamour is intended to get people to not take notice of you. It's kind of like pass without a trace in D&D if you're a D&D geek like myself. It's more about making yourself just sort of 
blend in so that you don't draw any unwanted attention to yourself. Oftentimes, when I find myself in need of this glamour, it's when I'm traveling somewhere. And so I don't have any items that I use for this glamour because chances are when I get where I'm going, I'm going to want people to notice me once I'm there. I just want the invisibility glamour while I'm commuting, which for me is usually via public transit since I live in a big city and I don't drive. In these cases, I'll use energy techniques to cast the invisibility glamour around myself while I'm getting where I'm going and then I can easily drop the glamour when I reach my destination. Here's the thing though, I tend to stand out in a crowd. Glamour is usually best when we are, as I said before, just amplifying qualities we already possess. And also, we are relying on how suggestible those around us are. Given that I very often stand out in a crowd, partly because I am almost a six foot tall woman, trying to use an invisibility glamour is like trying to get people not to notice a six foot tall rooster standing in front of them. When I know that I'm not dressed to blend in, which is frequently, I use a different approach. If you followed me, you know I had a rough upbringing. Pardon my French as the expression goes, but I learned to carry myself in a way that says, I'm not the bitch you want to fuck with. In a way, you could look at this as a sort of spontaneous glamour that I just started doing in my youth before I even knew what glamour magic was. I thought of it or described it as the owl technique. When threatened, owls will puff themselves up to make themselves appear larger and more formidable than they are. They may very well have no chance in hell of beating whatever threat is facing them, but they are going to try to get that predator to perceive them in a way that makes the predator hopefully decide it's too big a risk to attack the owl. Once I started using glamour magic, in addition to that way of carrying myself, I used energy techniques to convey that I'm actually the dangerous one and that coming at me would likely be biting off more than the other person could chew. You have to be smart about this and know when it's best to try to go unnoticed and when it's best to project that if someone tries to fuck around with you, you will make sure that they find out. For me, it's kind of like the concept during the Cold War of mutually assured destruction. You want their perception of you to be that if they try anything with you, the cost would likely be too high. But you've got to be able to carry yourself in a way that goes along with that type of glamour. And it's even better if you have at least some skill in backing up that badassery. If you can't, then those who are less suggestible aren't as likely to be kept away by a glamour like that. Can you use an item for either of these glamours? Yes, you absolutely can. You could, for instance, charge a ring for either of these and wear it when you know you're likely to be in a situation that you may need it, or a situation where you may want to be invisible, or a situation where you want to project that you are the biggest, baddest one around. I opt not to do this because chances are, like I said, I don't want that glamour to be up all of the time and I don't want to have to take an item like a ring for instance on and off and keep track of it. But you could charge an item with either of these glamours if you wanted to. Other than the examples of glamours I've already given, what are some common glamours that people use? Here's just a list of just a couple. To get noticed or to attract a certain type of attention to themselves attracting the attention of potential romantic partners, to be seen as attractive, to be seen as an ideal job candidate or anything else that you're applying to, to garner someone or a group of people's trust, to get people to see you as an expert or authority on a subject, to be understood or heard anytime you want someone to perceive you in a certain way. You are not limited to these topics. They are just common glamours that I see or use. Things I often see confused with glamour magic or glamour magic confused with. It can go either way. 
The first one is we've already covered that you can use glamour magic as part of your protections, but it is not protection magic. I see these get confused quite frequently, which leads to point number two. Lately, I've seen some people lumping veiling in with glamour magic, but veiling in the traditional sense is not glamour magic. It's actually protection magic because it's about protecting you magically and energetically and protecting your energy, not about how others perceive you. Now, that doesn't mean you couldn't incorporate glamour magic into your veiling by charging your veil with a glamour so that it is both protection magic and a glamour, but veiling itself is not a glamour. But maybe I'll do a whole video if you're interested on clothes as part of glamour magic. The last one I want to bring up is that glamour magic is not a love spell, though you could use glamour magic in addition to or as a component of your love spell. Remember that glamour magic is very much like hypnosis. It can't make someone fall in love with you if they aren't inclined to do so. If someone is into you and you cast some sort of attraction glamour, it might be the little push that they needed to shoot their shot with you. But if someone really doesn't like you in that way, a glamour isn't going to make them attracted to you. All right, we've talked about what glamour magic is, some common uses of it, and some things it's often confused with or for. Let's now get into how you can use your daily hygiene practices as your own daily glamour magic routine. In this episode, I'm going to talk about daily hygiene practices, but I'm going to save makeup, which is a daily hygiene practice for some, for its own video. The things we're going to talk about in this video can apply equally to those of any gender identity and those who don't wear makeup. So these are things a vast majority of us can do. That's why I thought I'd start with this particular area of glamour magic because it really is for everyone. And I think that those who are less femme presenting can sometimes feel left out when we talk about glamour magic. The glamours I'm talking about today do all require you to charge certain items, but you are going to have most, if not all of these items already on hand. You can use what you're already using for your daily hygiene routine. That's the beauty of these particular glamours that I'm going to talk about. You may find yourself wanting to purchase specific items, maybe to replace what you already have somewhere down the line in the future when you can afford to do so, but you can absolutely start with what you already have in your bathroom. If you've followed me for a while, if you've heard me talk about witchcraft before, you know that I absolutely advocating for using what is accessible to you in this moment. So if you want to buy specific body washes or deodorants or whatever down the road, that's fine. Do that. I have done that. I have uh, purchased specific hygiene products to align with what I want to do in my glamour magic, but you can use any body wash you have, any deodorant you have. You can buy specific things if you want to, but if you're in a place where that's just not economically feasible or fiscally responsible for you right now, that's okay too. You don't have to use expensive products. Start out by using what you already have on hand. Ideally, in my personal opinion, it's best if you start out by doing a spiritual cleanse of your body before doing these glamours. That could mean starting off by standing in a shower that is just cool water running over you. It could mean smoke cleansing, sound cleansing, whatever your jam is. But I also understand as a mom and a busy woman that sometimes we don't have the luxury to add that extra step in. So it's okay if you can't, but if you have the time, I do recommend that being the first step to your daily glamour magic routine. It doesn't have to be a full out ritual cleanse. Like I said, just start out the shower with cool water and let that run over your body completely for a minute or so before you start actually doing your, you know, showering. 
uh, or, you know, if you can, a little smoke cleansing beforehand, or even just, you know, if you have a singing bowl, because I have one of those, I absolutely love it. Just, you know, tap that a couple of times or do a little round, however you like to use yours. Um, do that before you start your hygiene slash glamour practice for the day. If you can, I understand we're all busy. It isn't the end of the world if you can't. One of the best tips that I can give you about glamour magic is to layer your glamours. Have different but complementary glamours going at once by charging your different hygiene products with different glamours. First, I'm going to talk about the different products and what glamours you might charge them for. And then I'll talk about how to charge them, or at least how I charge them. This may seem like a bit of a beauty video, but it's about glamour magic, I promise. Here is the list of items we're going to talk about, and I'm going to mention them in the order that I use them slash layer them. There are a couple on here that maybe not everybody uses in their daily hygiene. That's okay too. Maybe you want to add them, maybe you don't all good do what works for you and what is within your budget here's my list shampoo body wash body oil moisturizer or lotion deodorant perfume or cologne toothpaste and mouthwash and lip balm or vaseline here's another tip that i've found useful in my glamour magic practice as well as in my beauty routine Try to have your shampoo, body wash, body oil, moisturizer, deodorant, and perfume or cologne all have a note in common. So if you're not used to like fragrances and talking about perfumes and that, the different smells or aromas in something are called notes. So you want to try to carry a common note through all of them. Bonus points if this note matches your intentions, but it doesn't have to. It can just be a note that you like or just hey, these are the products that I could get that all have, you know, a common note. The reason I suggest this is twofold. If you want to be known as a being that always smells divine, having a consistent note run through as many of your products as possible will help with that endeavor. And even without glamour magic, it can help you to be perceived in a more positive light. For me, that common note through all of my products is vanilla, which can sound boring, I know, but it generally matches with my intentions. And that base note of vanilla has been shown as one of, if not the, I'm not exactly sure, can't remember, um, most attractive scents out there. So it's in the top list of appealing scents. And as a side note, uh, I do charge my different perfumes with different glamours, but that base vanilla note goes with all of the perfumes that I wear. So even though I'm layering products and glamours, in the end, they will all blend and work well together. For those who aren't big on fragrance or maybe one of your products doesn't really have a fragrance, it's okay to use products that have no scent, especially if you have uh, sensitive skin. For example, the moisturizer I use on my face has no scent. It's really not a great idea to use anything scented on your face for the most part. And if you have sensitive skin, like I said, you can absolutely use all unscented products for your glamours if that's what you need to be healthy, or even if it's just your preference. I'm not going to go over the specific glamours that I've charged each of my products with, but for an example for this video, let's say that you are wanting people to be drawn to you and see you as an authority in your career or area of interest. Since you're using shampoo on your head, which is associated with knowledge, you could charge it with the intent something like this. I am seen as an authority on whatever it is you want to be knowledgeable about. Now, I fully understand some of us can wash our hair every day and some of us can't. I myself have been told by every stylist I've been to and even one of my doctors that for myself, I should only do a traditional shampooing of my hair once a week if possible. In between traditional shampooing, I use what's called dry shampoo. If you're not familiar with it, dry shampoo most often comes in a spray can like hairspray. 
You spray it onto your roots and work it through your hair to break up and absorb the oils. Sometimes I can make it a week like that, but a lot of times I can't. It depends on my activity level and how much product I've put in my hair that week, etc. But daily, I'm doing some form of shampooing on my hair. And since I do a lot of dry shampooing, my dry shampoo is charged the same as my traditional shampoo. In our example, we want to draw people to us and be seen as an authority. In this case, you could then charge your body wash or bar of soap with the intent that others see me as a safe space and feel comfortable being open with me. Then you could charge your body oil with the intent that others find themselves drawn to me. You might want to charge your deodorant with the intent that others see me as cool and confident in all situations. Your perfume or cologne could be charged with the intent that others see me as having an air of authority. Your toothpaste can be charged with the intent others find what I say very believable. You could do the same thing or something similar with your mouthwash. If you use lip balm or Vaseline for your lips, and Vaseline is honestly the better option, you can charge it with the intent that my words are well received by others. You can see how we are layering glamours here within our daily hygiene. Each layer has a different charge, but at the same time, all of these glamours work together to achieve that overall goal. They're all different qualities and attributes that help to achieve that overall goal. You can customize this however you like and make it apply to your specific goals. When it comes to these items, I try to charge them with glamours that I'm going to want to be using and projecting on a daily basis, with the exception of my perfumes, of course, because as I stated, my perfumes are charged for different glamours, but they still work with the daily glamours I've charged into everything else. I choose my perfume on which intent works best for what I'm doing that day. How often do you have to charge your hygiene items for glamours? That depends on you. Generally, I charge them with the intent that the charge will last until I run out of that product. I feel like this works well for things that you go through fairly quickly or frequently. My perfumes tend to last me a long time though, so I'll often recharge them on the full moon. It just depends on you. If you feel like you need to recharge something, then do it. If you feel like you go through it fast enough that the initial charge is good enough, then do that. Trust your intuition as to what is right for you in regard to how often you should charge each of your products with your glamours. Let's get down to the nitty gritty. How do you charge these items? If you already have a way that you charge items for glamour magic or anything else, and you're just here to see how I combine daily hygiene with glamours, that's fine. Uh, you can continue to charge things however works for you and your practice. This is just how I do things and there isn't one right way. I'm just showing you my way and you can take what resonates with you and leave the rest behind. I don't cast a circle for this. If I'm being honest, there aren't many things that I cast a circle for at this point in my practice. When I was younger and just starting out, I would cast a circle for every blessed thing under the sun, but as I and my practice age, I find that I don't need to cast them for things like this. I've been doing this for so long and I just kind of do it, so I really had to stop and think about the steps I use in my process. For this, I hold the hygiene product between my hands. I pull energy up from the earth and down from the sky, both are directed to my solar plexus first, where I focus on mixing my intent with the energy drawn. And then I project the energy mixed with my intent through my arms and out through my palms of my hands into the object while repeating my intent in my mind. I envision the energy and the intent filling the item I'm charging. How you will envision that depends on you. For me, I envision them being filled with a light and I feel the vibration of the energy I want them to project. As I said, there are many ways to do this, but this is typically how I do it. Some practitioners will charge their items on their altar or have a formal ritual to charge their glamour magic items. 
it's all up to you. Once you've charged your items, how do you use them? Just use them as you normally would in your daily routine. If I'm not in a hurry, I try to think about what each product is charged with as I use them. Some practitioners will also incorporate symbols, sigils, and ruins that correspond to their intent by, in this case, drawing them on their body with things like their body wash, body oil, or moisturizers that they apply as they apply them. I personally don't use symbols, sigils, or runes with the products we talked about today. Sometimes I will with my makeup, but not my daily hygiene products. That's just my personal choice. I just want you to know that it's an option if it appeals to you. If you do opt to do this, just make sure that you've thoroughly researched and understand each symbol, sigil, or rune that you wish to use in your glamour magic. We've talked a little about glamour magic in general in this video, and hopefully I've given you some inspiration about how you can couple it with your daily hygiene routine. There are many other ways that you can do glamour magic. If there is interest, I can do videos on things like using makeup for glamour magic. We could talk about incorporating both color magic and color psychology into your glamours. We could talk about wardrobe and accessories in glamour magic, using music to up your glamour magic game and creating glamours for how people perceive inanimate objects like your house. Let me know if you are interested in any of those topics in the comments below. As always, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please give the video a thumbs up and until I see you again, blessings to you wherever your journey finds you.